you know the old saying, nothing is certain but death and taxes. But you know, the truth is, taxes can actually be a lot more painful, sadly enough. And Jason Deshays is vice president with Butler & Company Certified Public Accountants and joins us with the tax tips we need to know before we file. Welcome back. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. You know, this is a topic we have to deal with and we're getting closer to the deadline. So first, let's talk about how the fiscal cliff deal basically affected taxes. Is it going to impact our taxes this year? There was only one aspect that did impact this year, okay. and it's more of a, a patch for something that's been patched for years and years. Okay. The biggest changes happened starting in 2013. Mm -hmm. People who make a lot more money will probably pay a lot more tax. Oh, yeah. But what the general hit for most people is you have to be very mindful of where your income fits because you may trigger certain taxes if you cross certain income thresholds. Oh, so just goodness. manage your income and work with a professional to make sure you're not inadvertently getting into some traps because yeah. you just went over a certain line. And obviously the average person is not going to know those traps without talking to mm -hmm. a professional. So it's important. So let's ask you as the professional, what is your advice for those who were jobless last year? Because we had a lot of unemployment. We did. And where I see that most of the problems happening is uh -huh. people were taking money out of retirement accounts and IRAs to try and pay for their living expenses. Right. Usually what happens is if they're under 59 and a half, there's a penalty attached to it. 10% of what they took out. Uh -huh. And that just creates a lot of tax. And sometimes there's withholding to help that. but. A lot of times people forget about that because they need as much cash as they can. So, so just be very careful with that and, and may end up with a balance that you weren't expecting. So just mm -hmm. be be just mindful that may happen this year. Good tip, good tip. Okay, so what job search expenses are deductible? It's expenses, so it could be travel, could uh -huh. be the cost of printing resumes and, and the cost to go to go interview. Okay. Be very careful though, there's a certain limitation. You have to have more than 2% of your income of these deductions before you get a dollar of deduction. So oh. you have to itemize and you have to have this threshold. So it's a little hard to make these things applicable for most people. And it's hard to wait till the last minute because sometimes you forget what these expenses were. So you really should keep track as you mm -hmm. go along through the yeah. year. So let's talk a little bit about home ownership because I know a lot of people that own a home say that they have a lot of tax advantages. What are those tax advantages? Well, you can deduct the interest that you pay on the mortgage uh -huh. and you can deduct the real estate taxes that you pay to the county. Okay. Uh, some cases you can deduct the PMI, which is the private mortgage insurance mm -hmm. you may have to pay as part of your mortgage. Okay. Depending on what your income is, you may or may not be able to do that. All right. And because you have those, you can be able to usually deduct your charitable contributions, sometimes yeah. medical, all those kind of things. What about for those who sold their homes last year? They'd be very careful. There's a lot of deductions sometimes tied into the HUD-1, which is a long kind of legal size yes. document. It's got all the closing costs. There's some deductions kind of buried in there. So you can be very careful about making sure you look at that. And if you bought a home, uh -huh. looking there too. Okay, now I want to just touch on this before you go because there are a lot of people dealing with medical bills. Medical bills are a huge expense. So can consumers actually catch a break by any chance when they're filing their taxes with that? Yes and no. There's a 7.5%. Remember we talked about the 2% earlier. Uh -huh, now uh -huh. it's 7.5%. Whoa. For, so if you made $100,000 and you had $7,500 of medical expenses, uh -huh. you still couldn't deduct them. It's only what's above Whoa. that threshold. But if you're over 65 and okay. you have uh, $28,000 or more of medical, or sorry, $26,000 in medical expenses or more, uh -huh. you can get credit from the state of New Mexico and there's also a deduction for anyone uh, for some of those medical expenses. Okay, well, you know, a lot of deductions are definitely left on the table each year. I mean, that happens. So what are the key ones before you go that are often forgotten so people can, can think about that? I think be very careful about your non-cash donations. So these are trips to Goodwill or to right. Big Brothers Big Sisters. Make sure you've got receipts for those and logs for that. Okay. Um, I think a lot of people forget that some of the things that their employer offers that True. don't necessarily tie into something you can do now, but there are things you can do for the future. So it's making sure you take advantage of flexible spending accounts mm -hmm. or other employee benefits that you can get through your employer. Okay. Some of those things will drop your income before you even get your W-2, which makes your tax bill a little less uh, egregious to deal with. Yes. Now, I know a lot of people out there are thinking, let's talk realism right now. What if we end up owing money, but we don't have that money to pay the bill? What, you just don't have thousands of dollars in the bank ready to just shell out to the government? No. We're um, doing it anyway, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, doing it anyway. Paycheck, but, so. <laughs> uh, there's, there's things called installment payment plans you can do. Okay. Uh, the, the federal government has a form you can utilize, uh -huh. and you can attach it to your tax return and, and make a request for certain payments. Okay. Depending on the balance, they may have to do automatic acceptance. So if you say, I can do $100 
$1,000 a month, they'll have to accept it. Okay. The state, you have to call and set up the payment arrangement separately. So as long as you show that goodwill and the, and the good faith that you're planning on paying, they'll usually work with you. And be very okay. be upfront with it and be proactive with it. Don't don't expect and wait till you get 17 notices before you deal <laughs> right. with the problem. Good point. Now, I know a lot of people need the pros, especially you, so tell us how they can find you. You can go to our website, butlercpa.com, or give us a call at 821-0893. Fantastic. Jason, thank you so much. Much needed information. <laughs>